So let's go back, Justin. Tell us how this book this, this book came about. You know, um, it's a really really popular book. A lot of people love it. So you know, I want to ask you about the name and stuff like that. But you know, give us give us a bit of a story. How did how did this come about? Yeah, it really. Um... I guess it kind of came on the heels of my first book, which was Gray Hat Python. I mean, we really didn't have a whole lot of creative juices flowing when we said, well, let's just make a black hat. We'll run out of hat colors pretty soon. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you, though, what's too. the difference? We'll, we'll have to get to that, but go on. Yeah, and I guess the for Black Hat Python, it kind of tied in more to the consulting and penetration test work that I was doing at the time. We were constantly faced with having to kind of write tools on the fly or... You know, we'd get so far into a network and get stuck because, you know, all the tools we had didn't, you know, give us the ability to pivot somewhere or to leverage a particular vulnerability. So a lot of the time we were kind of writing tools as we went. Um, and so I thought, you know, this might be a great time to capture some of these ideas, both things that I'd kind of done at my day job and kind of some of the things that, you know, you put in the research pages of your notebook where you're like, oh, you know, it'd be really cool to build something that does this or does that. So yeah, it was a it kind of a different, it came from a different place definitely than than my first book. Yeah, so I mean, your, your first book is, is like malware, is that right? And your second book is like penetration testing. Is that kind of a summary or could you give us the, you know, the difference? Yeah, so my first book was more heavily geared towards low level um, reverse engineering, building tools from the ground up, um, so, you know, like debuggers and, you know, how to automate bug hunting and how to help with exploit writing. So um, definitely more of a niche crowd that would be interested in kind of digging into the guts, uh, you know, operating system internals, stuff like that. So that's really where I was spending a lot of my time, you know, in 2007, eight and nine was a lot more reverse engineering, exploit writing, kind of low level work, writing fuzzers, that type of thing. And then, uh, you know, over time spent more and more time doing kind of traditional penetration testing work. So the black hat isn't like trying to break into companies um, and steal. It's a it's more for penetration testing. So ethical hacking type stuff. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's all the same activity. I guess it's all <laughs> in the intent behind it, right? Because uh, yep. yeah, we were trying to steal stuff, you know, generally speaking, uh, but we were under contract to do it. So yeah, it's definitely not encouraging people to go commit crime. Uh, it's encouraging people to behave badly uh, under contract. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is it, sorry, go on. Tom. No, I would like. To say, I think it also shows you what the ba bad guys are, are trying to do with their yep. techniques. And you can see what kind of code that they write. I mean, I, I always get a, a lot of flack on YouTube and social media about like, why, and I mean, I think this has been going on forever, is like, why are you teaching people to break in? But I mean, if you, that's yep. what a penetration tester or ethical hacker is paid to do anyway. And if you, you don't know, know your enemy. Yeah, exactly. If you don't know how to do it, how are you going to stop it? So the, so the, the, the book came out of the fact that you... They were tools, but you were limited by those tools. And hence, you would write your own tools to do more than like the tool set that you had. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, just I worked for this great company called Immunity that was full of some of the best hackers um, around. And so it was, yeah, just trying to pull together, you know, as many good ideas as I had at the time um, that I thought would be genuinely useful for either a penetration tester or maybe somebody who's working at a startup where they don't even have a budget for pen tests, but they have somebody who's got security interests and they're able to kind of write some tools and do some tests themselves. But yeah, definitely, um, really, it was just trying to trying to pull in some of these neat ideas that we had while we were doing this work on the fly. And we had a product called Canvas that um, all the modules were written in Python. So there was a lot of the ability for me to kind of translate back and forth thinking about, you know, stuff we had done in Canvas and, you know, stuff that uh, I was doing a standalone script sometimes. So uh, yeah, really fortunate to be at such a cool company at the time too. 